Is there life after death? If a man die, shall he live again? The Bible says in Job 14, verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? So is there life after death? How can we know? This question must have crossed your mind at some point in life. It's a classic question that has divided the human race for years. Staunch atheists say no, whereas Christians say a definite yes, and base their answers and beliefs upon their final authority, the Word of God, the Bible. Atheists just base their answers on opinions, as they have no final authority. It takes a lot of faith to be an atheist stroke evolutionist. Evolution is a lie. Regarding evolution, which is probably the greatest hoax of all time, which evolved first and how long did it work without the others? For instance, the digestive system in your human body, the food to be digested, the appetite, the ability to find and eat the food, the digestive juices, or the body's resistance to its own digestive juice, your stomach and intestines, etc. The drive to reproduce, or the ability to reproduce, which evolved first. The lungs, the mucus lining to protect them, the throat, or the perfect mixture of gases to be breathed into the lungs. And how about this one? The plants or the insects that live on, the, that live on and pollinate the plants. Which evolved first? The bones, ligaments, tendons, blood supply or muscles to move the bones. What about the nervous system to repair the repair system or the hormone system? Which evolved first? And how can love, mercy, guilt evolve? Evolution is a lie. Somebody has once said, the wonderful teaching of evolution. You're here by accident. You're heading nowhere. And you have no purpose. Evolution is a lie. Nothing, this is, uh, this, again, this is evolution. The evolutionary formula for making the universe. Nothing plus nothing equals two elements plus time equals 94 natural elements, plus time equals all physical laws and a completely structured universe of galaxies, systems, stars, planets and moons, orbiting in perfect balance and order. Evolution is a lie. Don't be conned into believing in evolution. And this is the evolutionary formula for making life. Dirt plus water equals living creatures. It doesn't make sense. You know it doesn't make sense. So we're looking at, is there life after death? Evolution doesn't have the answer. Let me give you just a couple more, a couple more facts in regard to evolution. Evolutionists theorise that the above two formulas can enable everything about us to make itself, with the exception of man-made things such as cars or buildings. Complicated things such as wooden boxes with nails in them require thought, intelligence and careful workmanship. But everything else about us in nature, such as hummingbirds and the human eye, is declared to be the result of accidental mishaps, random confusion and time. You will not even need raw materials to begin with. They make themselves too. Evolution is a lie. It's a faith. A couple more before we move on. Somebody has once said the theory of evolution is hydrogen is a colourless, odourless gas which given enough time turns into people. You know what evolution is? Evolution is a fairy tale for grown-ups. A frog plus a kiss equals a prince is a fairy tale. A frog plus time equals a prince 
Here's also a fairy tale. From molecules to man needs some way of creating new complex genetic programs or information. Mutations, i.e. copying mistakes, and natural selection lead to a loss of information never increased. Time is the god of the evolutionist. And one more thing before moving on. The greatest, or well, probably the greatest, case against evolution is the fossil record. There are no, I repeat, there are no transitional fossils. Primitive to modern plants there are none. Single cells to invertebrates there are none. Invertebrates to fish there are none. Fish to amphibians there are none. Amphibians to reptiles there are none. And reptiles to birds there are none. So evolution is a lie. If a man dies, shall he live again? Is there life after death? Is there really a literal place called heaven and a literal place called hell? One of which we go when we die. If there is nothing after death, then surely you can live a life of total selfishness and do whatever you want without any fear of consequences for your actions afterwards. But if there really is a hell, and it is the place where everyone goes who has rejected Jesus Christ as their saviour, shouldn't I do something about it in regarding my own life, as well as warning the world of what is to come? I mean, if I really believed in hell, shouldn't I do all I can to stop you, your family and neighbours from going there? And it is for this reason that there is a hell why I'm producing this CD. If you and I chose just five people in our families to sit around a table and discuss this subject of life after death, I wonder how the conversation would go. Would it get heated and tempers fly? Or could we discuss it in a calm, rational manner? You see, this subject has caused many arguments among many people. Talking about God and the afterlife has caused a number of arguments even in my own family. Today the word hell is used as a swear word and most people don't fear this place, they just don't want to talk about it. Christians who believe in hell are trying to stop as many people as they can from going there, even when those people don't want to listen and don't seem to care. And maybe this is you, the listener of the CD. I hope and pray that you are open-minded enough to listen to this CD all the way through. Your eternal destination depends on what you do with the Gospel message. Either accept it and do something about it, in which case you get all your sins forgiven and go to heaven, or reject it and die in your sins, in which case you will go to hell when you die. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's your choice and time is running out. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Christians are trying to reach these lost people, maybe you, all over the world because the Lord Jesus Christ loves them and doesn't want them to go to this terrible place called hell. Christians all around the world are trying to reach lost people with the gospel. Jesus Christ loved you so much that he came to die for you. And if you put your faith and trust in him to forgive you of all your sins, then you can, then you can be saved from hell. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. One thing we must all realise is this. Just because you and I don't believe in something, i.e. life after death, doesn't mean it is not real or true. Stop and think about that for a moment. Heaven and hell are real places, just as your own home, village, town or city. And the reason I've made this CD 
is because I want to do all I can to stop you from going there. And that's it. I'm not trying to get you to join a church, and I'm certainly not after your money. I'm just doing everything I can to warn as many people as possible that if you don't ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive all your sins, hell is the place you will go when you die. You have a chance right now to make heaven your fixed eternal destination. But if you throw this CD away and reject the warning it is giving, you will only have yourself to blame. Friend, there is no greater decision you can make in life. You choose your eternal destination by the choices you make. No matter what you have been told or taught, know this, that the authorised version Bible, the Word of God, is 100% perfect and has never been proven wrong. It is perfect. It is God's holy book and he has preserved his words for us today. It was the book that made our nation great. Yet now Great Britain is just Britain because we have discarded the Bible. We have taken it out of our homes, our schools, our businesses and our hospitals. And we are reaping what we have sown. No longer are the scriptures taught to our children and now we are seeing the results. No longer do children grow up fearing the consequences of their sins. They just don't care because they don't know right from wrong. They don't know what sin is. In 1 John 3 verse 4, we read this. 1 John 3 4, we read this verse. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is lawlessness. Sin can be neglect. Doubt is sin. Unbelief is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. Pride is sin. There are open sins and there are secret sins. And you listening to this CD and myself, we are sinners. Each generation is becoming more godless and therefore wicked, unruly, selfish, unthankful, unholy, disrespectful, violent. I'm sure you can think of many more words that des describe today's society. Yet the Bible predicted this would happen. In 2 Timothy 3 we read, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Can you see those traits in today's modern man? So back to our question. Is there life after death? The Word of God states categorically that there is life after death. In Acts 24 verse 15 we read this, And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. Both sinners and those who have had their sins forgiven by Jesus Christ shall live after they have died, in heaven or hell. There is life after death. The Bible says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Notice that the Bible says that there is everlasting fire. It doesn't matter whether you or I believe in the everlasting fire of hell, the Bible declares it to be true. We also read in the scriptures, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life 
eternal. Note, everlasting punishment and life eternal. You and I shall spend eternity either in heaven or hell. We need to know what to do to escape hell before it's too late. We've already quoted John 3.16, But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the most famous verse in the Bible. It has been quoted in more sermons than any other verse. Yet if you believed in it with all your heart, note your heart, not just your head, you can escape hell and go to heaven when you die. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10 says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Jesus spoke these words. He is saying that if you trust in what he said and believe that he came to take your sins and die in your place so you could have his righteousness, you can have everlasting life. Have you ever asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of all your sins? Religion won't save you from hell. Neither will the church. Neither will your own good works. Only Jesus Christ can save you from hell. Why not ask him to forgive you right now, before it's too late, right where you are, as you listen to this CD. Ask him to forgive you of every sin you've ever committed, and to save you. If you do it from your heart, you will be saved for eternity. Life is so busy today that most people don't stop and think about the deep things, the meaning and purpose to it all. Most people are not prepared for eternity or for the judgment to come. Are you? Today could be the day that you wake up and find out that there is a God, Jesus Christ, who loves you and wants to forgive you of all your sins, if you let him. But will you? Have you found out the meaning and purpose to life yet? If not today, could be the day. Keep listening. The Bible declares, and to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Note a few things in regard to these scriptures here. Jesus Christ is coming back again. It could be any time now. And this is what true Christians are waiting for. He is coming back to collect all those that are saved and take them to be with him in heaven. Note also that he is coming to judge all and to punish those that obey not God and have not received Jesus Christ as their saviour. In other words, you have turned your back upon God. Note also, those who have rejected Jesus Christ will be banished from his presence forever in hell fire. Whether you and I believe it or not, that is what the Bible says. In Revelation 20 verse 15 it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We are warning you of the consequences of rejecting Jesus because we love you and we only want what is best for you. Please understand that. Please take heed to these solemn warnings. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You and I die because we are sinners. 
We would live forever if we were without sin. Hence the reason why Christ Jesus came into the world, to take our sins and give us his righteousness and his gift of everlasting life. For he hath made him, that's Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We can have all our sins forgiven because of Jesus Christ. We just need to trust in him and the sacrifice he made on the cross by dying for us. Jesus' death, burial and resurrection provided a way for us all to go to heaven, but only if we ask him to forgive us. We cannot get to heaven on our own or in our own power. The Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Every false religion, Roman Catholicism, Islam, Hinduism, Sikhism, etc., and every cult, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, the Christadelphians, the Unitarians, etc., will try to tell you that you can get to heaven by works. You can work or earn a place in heaven, but the Bible says you can't. I've known many people when they come to the end of their life, start giving money to charities. Most do this trying to cleanse their soul, knowing that very soon they will leave time for eternity. They think that their good works will give them a good standing with God and will save them when it won't. God doesn't want your money. He wants a relationship with you. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Here we see that the Bible tells us that eternal life is in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life. And that he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. It is only through Jesus Christ and trusting in him for our sins forgiven that we can go to heaven. Allah, Muhammad, Mary, plus every other God and every person in every religion and cult will one day have to bow the knee to Jesus Christ. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. How about that for power? Surely by now you can see that Jesus Christ is the only way. He said that I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Notice in this verse of Scripture that the Bible says we can know that we have eternal life. Ask any Jehovah's Witness, Mormon, Christadelphian, Unitarian, Roman Catholic or Muslim, etc., whether they know that they have eternal life. None of them are sure because their false religion or cult tells them that they cannot be sure. Take for example Oliver Cromwell. Cromwell was a devout Christian who read and lived the scriptures daily. He is in heaven right now as you are listening to this CD because he asked Jesus Christ to forgive him of all his sins. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So again, I would urge you to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you and save you and give you that peace that he alone can give. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These are such comforting words from our Lord. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, that's Jesus Christ, ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus wants you to walk through this life with him, 
so that he can help you in every decision you make. You won't believe what a difference he can make in your life. I can personally testify of that. I've been following the Lord since 1989 and he has helped me through every part of my life, whether good or bad. He can do the same for you if you let him. To finish with, I've included a scripture that declares Jesus Christ to be the true God. 1 John 5.20 And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. In a day when Christianity seems to be under attack from all sides, the Bible declares that Jesus Christ is the true God. He alone is our only hope to world peace, a perfect economy, a perfect environment, love among all races, food in abundance for all, equality for everyone, etc. When, when he returns to set up his kingdom, everything will be put right and righteousness will finally reign. Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. Are you ready for his return? I leave you with a few challenging questions. Number one, what are you trusting in to get you to heaven? If your answer is not Jesus Christ and him alone, you will never make it. You have been deceived and you will go to hell when you die. That is what the Bible teaches. Number two, what is stopping you from becoming a Christian right now? If it's pride or anything else, do you think it's worth it, knowing that the Lord could come back any second, or you could die any time? Get saved now where you are. Is your pride worth an eternity in hell? And number three, are you going to trust Jesus Christ, religion, the cults, or yourself? If you don't trust Jesus Christ, you won't make it. The word of God says, if so be, that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. The truth is in Jesus. So there we have it. Just another CD among billions all over the world. What are you going to do with this one? Throw it away? Think upon it. What are you going to do with its message? Eternity is a certainty. I hope this CD has caused you to stop and think for a few moments in your busy life. I'd be happy to try and answer any questions you may have. May the Lord Jesus Christ lead and guide you into all truth and may you get saved before it's too late and time runs out. How to get saved, to become a Christian and escape hell? What do you have to do? Well, you have to realise you're a sinner and that you need your sins forgiven. The Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so that death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. It is only Jesus Christ that can forgive your sins. Works can't, religion can't forgive you, it's only Jesus Christ. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then you need to repent of your sins and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you and to save you. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And once you're a Christian, what do you need to do then? You need to start reading the Bible. Only get an authorised version Bible. All others have errors and mistakes in them. You want to get yourself an AV Bible. And then you need to find other Bible-believing Christians to read, learn, share and pray and worship God together with. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, as, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You need to pray to God as often as you can. Talk to him about everything. Ask him to help you in everything you do. Trust in him at all times, the Bible says. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. You can talk to God about anything. 
And then, finally, you need to do all you can to reach as many sinners and lost people in this world as possible before Jesus Christ returns. Give out Christian tracts, booklets, CDs, everywhere you go. If you'd like some, write to me. Millions are on the road to hell and we need to do all we can to warn everyone of the coming judgment. You need to try to tell as many sinners as possible about the wonderful love of God. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. If you would like some free copies of this CD or a couple of free booklets, then you contact us. The Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. My name is John Davis. You can contact me at Time for Truth, P.O. Box 1146, Kidderminster, Worcestershire, DY10 1WG. And that's in England. My email address is john.e.davis at hotmail.co.uk. And the website is www.timefortruth.co.uk. May God bless you.